Happy New Year's. Welcome back to our channel today, guys. Um, thanks for, I hope you guys enjoyed your Christmas and going into a New Year's. We are doing, we're pouring fast because we mixed this a long time ago and it's getting hot. Um, we're pouring a coffee bar for a coffee shop for this really cool lady we know. And this might displace all this acrylic ice. I'm not really sure what this will do. I'm trying to do a really random multicolor pour for that we're going to put LED lights behind. So I'm um, using the acrylic ice that just gives a crazy reflective look, especially when we put LED lights back behind there. So if this all works, this will be a really fun. It's going to be an exterior. So we'll really test the epoxy there. An exterior um, coffee bar. Top. So how are you guys doing today? Where are you guys watching from? Thanks for all the love, by the way, guys. Make sure if you are watching that you, that you click that little button. We're a tiny company and all the love you guys give is a huge deal to us. Illinois. Illinois. You guys freezing up there in Illinois right now? Diana sent us a road. Diana, you're always a badass. Thank you so much for joining our channel today. A bunch of light. Yeah. Thanks for all the love, guys. Oh. It's crazy. You guys hitting that like button, it might sound stupid. It helps our channel trend. It helps so many little things and details. That's that's how a, a small company like us, do you know all of our competitors like Stone Coat? I shouldn't name names, but there's a lot of big companies out there that are all our competitors. They're all owned by a $2 billion company. So it's awesome when we can come in here and do real authentic work, talk to you guys, um, connect with you and go over real content. And I don't have to buy followers. Indiana. Um, the person in Illinois said it's raining in 40 degrees. Raining in 40. You know what? I'd rather it be raining in 40 than freezing rain or something like that. Okay, this is actually going to kind of be badass. Now, we are casting this upside down, so what you're actually looking at will be the future top, I believe. Depend as long as it's pretty. If it ain't pretty, it's not going to be anything. It won't be a damn thing if it ain't pretty. Anybody have those New Year's resolutions? Oh, and by the way, stay tuned. I am going through a really quick two t tool tutorial at the end of this where I'm gonna quickly break down um, a lot of the tools I use in the epoxy trade and exactly why I use them and why I've chosen them and why I've upgraded certain things. It's gonna be quick, but and not nearly as detailed as what we go over in class, but if you guys like it, and I guess I've been getting asked for that quite a bit, so I thought I may as well deliver. Um, hola, Illinois. Hola, from Illinois. Muchas gracias. For the last seven years, I've been successful. Say what? To not have one. For the last seven years, I've been successful. To, to not have one what? What did you not have one of? I'm glad you're successful with it, though. That's a, that's a good to hear. I just I guess I don't know what you've been successful with, so feel free to share with us what that is. I'm trying to smash all these stupid little crystals down. I don't. They're so annoying when one pops up high and you have one little diamond. Thank you so much for sharing the live, guys. That's a huge deal. God bless you guys today. Do you know my New Year's resolution is to be a little more encouraging with the way I talk? I'm always like such a crap talker too. I was a Marine and I always thought it was funny just to talk crap to people and I mess with people a lot. I'm going to try to mess with people less and be more of an encouraging person. Um, he said, um, Thanks he, for all the love, guys. Is he hasn't had one for seven years. <laughs> oh, you haven't? I like that. You know what? I haven't had a resolution. I don't do resolutions either. Except I have been trying to think about how to better myself more and more. So that's... Um, I gotta tell you guys, I got really super lucky last night. Um, I don't know, I shouldn't have said it like that, I did. I got, I got like two or three dozen roses. It was the biggest pile of roses I've ever seen for this girl. She was a hottie with a body. No, I'm just joking. She was a sweet old lady trying to get around me in a wheelchair in the store. And I'm gonna preference this. I don't usually tell anything about personally that I do. I don't believe in giving things to people in order to gain something in return or so people see you. I think if you do something for a kind of, like you always see these people on TikTok that are giving checks to homeless people on TikTok. If you really cared about the homeless person, you'd give that freaking check and you wouldn't be on TikTok giving it. If you really wanted to be a blessing, you'd bless quietly. So I, I do believe that. But I've had some really just fun, exciting things. 
because I try to do that every day. And thanks for all the love, guys. Um, and I, I see this lady trying to get down the aisle in one of those hover carts, and I'm rough on people because we live in America where we know usually the people that take those little hover rounds, it's not because they're crippled. They just kind of don't like getting around on their own. But she looked like the sweetest old lady in the world. And she looked old, like she needed that damn thing. And she was trying to get by me, so I moved all these noodles because the store had all these mismatched boxes on the floor. And she's trying to get by, and her roses were hitting the, this pole there. And I was trying to get them back in her cart. And I, she's super old, and I started kind of flirting with her, just joking with her. And I was like, ooh, who got you roses? And she was like, oh, I got them for myself. And I was like, what? I was like, why'd you get them for yourself? And she goes, well, I just liked them and I needed them or whatever, so I, th I thought I needed them. And I was like, man, I was like, you're pretty enough, somebody should buy you roses. And she was like, oh, thank you. And it looked like it made her sad. And that like crushed me. I was like, well, man, I was trying to be sweet to this old lady, but I probably made her sad that nobody's around and I was thinking about it. And this is effed up, but I was like, probably everybody that buys her, bought her roses is freaking dead. The lady is not the youngest, spryest thing. And I was shopping and I still had quite a bit of shopping to do and then I thought what a douchebag for me to tell her somebody would buy her roses. I should go run and buy her roses. So I went and saw where she was in the store and ran over to the flower department and I found out all the roses were going on like clearance sale. So I got like the biggest bunch of roses, twice as big as the one she had and they were all fresh. They gave them to me for 50 bucks and I went and bought them really quick and then took them to her in the store and to see that lady's face and to give her a hug and do that was so amazing and I'm not saying this to say I did anything special but I can't believe the blessing I received from that and what an awesome, just cool experience that was and to see you, I made an actual difference to somebody. Um, and, and maybe that's just some dumb little side thing, um, but never underestimate your ability. If you're ever feeling down over the New Year's or you're frustrated or you're looking at like trying to better yourself, just start looking out as to how you can bless others and realize how simple it is to be a blessing to others. And that was my dumb little side story this morning. So, sorry, I don't know if we have any viewers still. But that was my exciting thing that happened yesterday, too. So I was just kind of, every once in a while you do something where it's fun and it really, you feel like you made a difference at least. Um, there's a coffee table. Uh, I say a coffee table, but there's a coffee shop where I'm trying to make a, um, I'm trying to make a bar top that's for her to pass the coffee, like it's a pass-through top outside of her place um, where she'll set the coffee and drinks outside of her window. And I, Dude, you pick good colors, Michael. I, I dig your colors, man. So yeah, sorry, I just told you guys the four-hour story. Yeah, we're gonna definitely layer this, and I do have mold release in this, and I have never cast into these forms either, just so you know, guys, so I'm sure I have all these questions that I should be able to answer just perfectly, but. Is that not sick as hell? Okay. Clear. Boom. Okay, that is beautiful, dude. Okay, that actually cast really well. Hello, thanks for joining our channel today. Thank you so much for the love, guys, and thank you for the questions. Please ask any questions, and over here, I have a stack of tools so i always get asked like first and foremost I, I, people are always wanting to know um whenever i'm torching like hey why are you torching and why don't you use, use a heat gun one of the biggest reasons is a heat gun to be really effective is usually around 850 900 degrees that's very very hot um even like this heat gun some of them have holders um it's going to be tough to just set this down plugged into a cord that you're dragging through a kitchen to do much um, to safely set this down if you need to or turn it off quickly because they don't like cool right down as soon as you turn them off. Um, you're dragging this cord all around in your kitchen and then anytime you're actually applying heat on the countertop it's also blowing on the countertop so it's disrupting your pattern and that's not always what somebody wants. So I'm not saying this is a tool to never have obviously it looks like I've used this one like a like a used heat gun. I'm trying to speak a little better I'm not going to tell nasty jokes anymore on this channel is all pure no, I don't know if it'll be all pure but a torch is very intimidating to a lot of people but most people don't realize that a torch flame is very safe even directly on fresh epoxy if it's not on a flammable surface and if it's not after alcohol being sprayed or anything else and you don't want to hit your masking but you can turn it on you can turn it off you don't need to try to find a place for a stand. You can set this right on the floor or any work surface you have. So I always prefer a torch. It's simplest. 
This is a UV flashlight. I was not looking for stains in hotels. We actually had a night, a um, glow-in-the-dark piece that Michael did that we were shining lights on, so glow-in-the-dark lights. Um, randomly, I do a lot of flooring and stuff, and, and outdoor is a huge part of my life, is outdoor flooring. And one of the biggest things, um, one of the most necessary tools, especially outside because of leaves and debris that's constantly coming on, is a battery-powered, not a plug-in, leaf blower. And it's good, it's good for when you're moving a ton of material to have a big high CFM leaf blower, but just something you can quick, quickly have on you. And again, not having a cord so you can get over epoxy and stuff without dragging and still have the tool working on the other side. Battery-powered leaf blowers, amazing. Um, everybody wants to know about our bottles. We either have our color, and it's all our powdered colors mixed in um, with 99% um, isopropyl alcohol, or we just have 99% isopropyl alcohol, and we mix that right into our bottle. We spray this as one additional way, not in conjunction with a flame, because we don't want to start a fire, but we can also spray alcohol. So a lot of people that are afraid of a heat gun, afraid of a torch, just make sure you mix according to the instructions. Don't let it exotherm for too long. Don't let it set up for too long. And alcohol will be a really adequate way, of course, keeping it away from flames just to smooth out all the air bubbles it'll evaporate off it leaves no residue and it's a, a really nice way i always wear gloves but I also clean my work area clean my gloves constantly with the alcohol and like i say we also spray a lot of colors and get a lot of designs with those um, if you're working on a lot of larger countertops and whatnot, or floors where you torch, we usually alcohol floors and don't torch them, but we also have this. This is a, a regular canister, just like this, plugs into the bottom of it. It's a weed burner, it costs $35 at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, um, and you can kind of reach out farther on something, feel like a little princess with a scepter if you want to. Um, grinders here, um, you know what? We'll keep it with mixing and stuff, more simplistic stuff. Um, I do use a lot of drill mixers, but I don't use them all the time. On a lot of my mixes, if it's a gallon or less, especially countertop epoxy, because the countertop products that we sell are a thicker viscosity, a lot of times I'll stick mix that if it's a gallon or less. And if I do drill mix, I'm usually putting, you know, two to four gallons on a five gallon pail, and it's for a large job. Um, but keep in mind, I am somewhat um, experienced at getting that all out of the pail on time and, and working that all in a timely manner. So don't expect to be able to just get on a job site and mix four gallons and be happy with the results. Don't do that if you haven't done that a lot. Um, grinders, um, you always, and I'll show you, sanding, sanders, which I, my DA, I'll bring you guys over here in a minute. I always use a DA sander, which I'm sorry I don't have right in front of me here. Um, I use that for anything wood. Um, or any sandable surface, and meaning not porcelain, not ceramic, not concrete, glass, stuff like that. You can sand anything that's like wood or plastic or um, composite surfaces um, and to prepare them. But then when you get into harder surfaces, you need to go to diamond tooling blades. And that's where you have like a flat grinder here. You have a crack chaser here. We have a couple really large handheld grinders. We have walk behind grinders. I mean, but here's a few of the things. And we go over all these and you get to use almost all these tools in class. Um, um, I went over how I stick mix my epoxy, but since I'm unorganized, I didn't explain my drill mixing. When I do drill mix, I make sure the paddle stays down into the epoxy, making sure it's not vortexing like air into the mix in any way. Um, and just mix really slow. If you see that you're sucking air bubbles in because you're mixing too fast, that means you're mixing too fast. So slow it down and you can mix for a longer period of time to get an ad adequate mix, but mixing slowly. So um, masks, I think it's just really important whenever you're sanding anything to, to wear proper PPE, wear your gloves, wear your mask. It keeps epoxy off of you. It keeps sanding debris and stuff like that out of your lungs. This is not meant for when you're applying the actual epoxy itself. We don't actually use masks with most of our resins because they are very safe. Um, I, here's a tool everybody always wants to know why I have sticky, nasty epoxy temperature guns around me all the time. You saw ever since that virus I'm not allowed to talk about came out, everybody used these everywhere on people. I never used it on myself, but I did use it on epoxy constantly. Because of knowing the temperature of your work surface, the bottle of epoxy you're working with, um, how hot it's getting as it sits in the cup, those are all very important things that comes at you really quick. And this right here is, is a super simple, inexpensive way to verify you have replicable results every single time. Um, showed you. This is what one should look like had it not been used by a bunch of dirty little fingers. 
um, how do I apply, how do I spread my epoxy on countertops generally? And I'll go into flooring on another day. Countertops, usually a foam roller is one of my go-to tools and I like to have a small chip brush that I'll try to pluck the, any loose fibers and you still pick one out of the countertop when you're done usually. But a foam roller is an amazing way. It's the only true lint-free roller is what I always say. So if you want to guarantee you're not getting lint into your epoxy that's gonna suck up and look awesome, a foam roller is just your money shot. I don't know if I'm allowed to say money shot on here. Little vacuum, it's invaluable to have a small handheld vacuum that's battery powered. Again, I'm so, I'm like the anti-cord guy when you're going interior, just keep your cords up and out of the way. Um, and you want to be able to um, suck or blow any kind of debris. So I hope you guys enjoyed this weird little tool time with, with Tim the Tool Man or whatever the hell. So, but we love to, I like to show people, um, I have really expensive, I even have like a kind of a high-end leaf blower, like, and we have like bigger tools and tools that people are intimidated, intimidated to use or scared to try to figure out how to, if they can even buy it or afford it or how they hook it up and almost never necessary. So we would try to go from whether you're wanting to be a huge contractor and that's just all you do when you have a 30 man crew or whether you're a DIYer that wants to do this on the weekend or just do your own house and you don't want to break the bank. You can very easily do countertops, floors and walls cheaper than any other construction method um, due to the, if you understand how to properly apply epoxy. So thank you so much for joining our channel today. Is there anything, do we have any questions? Yeah, someone wants to know how you Scratches, um, two things. You can either just sand it, say with a 400 grit um, DA sander and just pour a clear over it. Or if you have a little more skill, which this is not a knock to anybody whether they do or not, because this is m more difficult said than done, or done than said, some shit like that. Um, um, bringing a polish back, I usually try to start with like a thousand grit sanding disc and then I go to 2000 and then 3000 and you have to buy those at an automotive paint supply shop and usually I'll end on a 5000 grit foamed back pad after I've worked out through all that scuff and I'll polish the top with that foam back pad. I prefer using water if I can too so it prolongs the life of the pad. Um, and then I'll use a, I like the Meguiar's ultra fine cut polishing paste and I use a regular DeWalt multi variable speed buffer for that. Um, and usually use one of the foams that are meant to keep things cool. So, so that, um, there's different density foams and wool, wool will kind of heat a surface up. So I usually use a foam so it keeps the surface cool while I buff with Meguiar's ultra polishing paste. The crazy thing is if you actually learn how to do that, it'll be the prettiest top you've ever had and it'll actually help surface harden it. So very good question. Uh, thank you. I hope that answered it. The classes are right here in Grand Junction, Colorado, and we have people come from all over the world for these classes. So we have a really beautiful valley. We're easy to fly right into here or we fly into Montrose, Colorado. And um, it's three full days of hands-on where you're, you start out in the morning while you're, uh, while you're introducing yourself, you're actually mixing epoxy. So, um, and then you usually get at least one to two samples done before lunch the first day, one to two done the, um, after lunch. So you, you are mixing and pouring and repeating different colors, different patterns. And then you're, we try to transition into explaining tools, which tools, why for interior, um, exterior concrete's a lot different, whether you're dealing with cement or asphalt or anything like that. And we try to go into all the differences, settling, moisture problems. It's, it's a very um, varying class. So if, you're, if you've never learned anything, we start out just a very base level. And usually, I'll be honest, usually we start out very at a very base level because even our contractors that think they're very experienced, they're, they're not necessarily always experienced at, at these exact systems and houses. So we just start from the ground up on every single thing and it's a very informative class, so. Bent feather. God bless you, Bent feather. That's my other grandma. My, my only real grandma that's been alive that I've known, so thank you. So when do, what time does the class start? The class starts at nine in the morning. Um, we have our next one is in a week from now. So a week and three days or whatever to be accurate. So, um, dude, I saw my last video that kind of trended and my titties were all just saggy. I was looking all nasty. So my new year's resolution, I'm gonna start doing push ups. I don't look like such a sack of crap for you guys. So that's, I'd never watch my own TikToks, and I was like, dude, I have not exercised enough. So I'm gonna start exercising a little more than apparently I thought I have, and that, there's my resolution just for you all. Are there products or application techniques for concrete floors that are crumbling? Crumbling? 
Oh, definitely. Like, come to class. If you have a crumbling concrete floor, call us. We'll take care of that. That's a, We have an amazing 15,000 PSI, very flexible, highly penetrating. It's a very long, skinny molecule resin that, that's probably the, the best product in the world just for that. So if you have crumbling concrete, don't stress. We'll just figure out how to fix it together. So. Can they find information about our class? Countertopepoxy.com. The link's in the bio. So I hope you guys still, I just did the whole class right here. No, it's a lot of hands-on. We go, we go over and over every type of sample, um, every type of known job issue, um, and we have Q&A every single day. Um, it's, a, it's just the most hands-on class. That's what I constantly hear from everybody that's been to every class. They're like, we've never had a class that's this informative or this hands-on. So hopefully I keep it that way. And we eat a lot of really good food that we don't make you pay for. We even barbecue and feed really good beef and all kinds of good stuff. So if you like my cooking. So, and you go to a really good restaurant as well. So, do we have any other questions? If not, I'm gonna just thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys for coming on to the live. Do we have anything? Nothing we have to. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys have an awesome New Year's and don't do anything crazy. And if the world ends and you're cool, show up at Countertop Epoxy because it'd just be fun. So we'll party and we'll do epoxy. So. And, and if it doesn't end, then show, sign up for the class and just do it normal and then show up a week later and we'll just, we'll just do epoxy together and be professional the rest of our lives. So but God bless you guys and have a really good New Year's.